Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this Grasshopper tutorial, I want to show you how you can make this differential growth uh, pattern inside Grasshopper using the Kangaroo plugin with some simple methods. So let me explain how this algorithm works. I'm going to turn off this part and uh, show you how you can use the Kangaroo plugin to create this polyline, which is going to be the output here. Okay. Yeah. Decrease this one and explain this. Okay, uh, so first of all, what we have here is a series of points, which you can see here. And you can make these points uh, by any curve you want. For this example file, I have created a simple curve or an ellipse here. And then I've used this curve divide curve to divide it into a series of points. For example, a, a thousand point is going to be okay. And then I'm going to project that on the ground. So we can use uh, the vector point and project point component and project this uh, these points in the, by default it's minus Z. So if you want to use Z here, you can say minus X, which is going to bring them downwards on any geometry you want. For this geometry, you can see that I've made a simple mesh on the ground. Uh, I've used the mesh primitive and use this mesh plane component. For the mesh uh, plane component, by default, it's like 10 by 10, which is not really that important. We just need those to project on the ground. And then I've just right click here and set one rectangle. So here you can see that I can give this uh, to any rectangle I want. When I update this, it's going to also update. The good thing about this part is that instead of this mesh plane, simple mesh plane component, I can use uh, any other mesh I want. So for example, uh, for example, I've made this mesh in uh, Rhino and then I've just right click here and internalize that. So you have that in Grasshopper. And then we can give that also as the projection. So that's going to project those points in the minus D direction on the base mesh we have here. So remember that you can always give a flat mesh or uh, any other mesh you want to the projection. That is going to project those uh, 1000 points towards the mesh and pull it downwards. Uh, after creating those points, we have to convert them into a polyline. So I'm going to use a curve polyline component to convert that into a poly polyline. And because I want to close it, I can right click here and invert the close input so it closes the polyline. Uh, the reason we are making this polyline here is that we need those segments here uh, to be like a spring, like a spring structure, and uh, make that a little bit stiffer so it doesn't deform easily. Uh, to do that, we can simply go to the Kangaroo plugin. We're going to use the bouncy solver because we want to see the fun, uh, final results also. So I'm going to give this as a bouncy solver. Uh, you can give a reset a button, which you want to reset, and uh, the on input is going to be a true false, which means if, uh, do you want to run the simulation or not? Okay, one of the goal object is to use the goals line, length line, which is a spring-like component. It's, it's going to convert any line into a spring thing, okay? So I'm going to go to the curve and use explode to explode all of those polylines again back to their segments, which is going to be these segments we have here, and we give that to the line. By default, the uh, length, as you can see here, it says, let me show you, uh, if non-provided starting length will be used, that means that if we have a line here, uh, it's going to have a multiplication of one. That means it can't get bigger or smaller, okay? So it has to be exactly at the same length it has. So I'm not going to change that one, but we can change the strength to get different results. That means how many, uh, how much is this goal important? So I'm going to give that to one of the goal objects we have here. Another thing here is that we want to keep all of those points that we have projected on the mesh 
like here on the mesh. So kangaroo goes on on mesh. We want to keep all of those points on the mesh we have here. This is another goal. And the most important part, which is going to create the differential growth output, is the goals co uh, collision part, and it's the sphere collide component. So what it does here is that we're going to make these these points as spheres and increase the radius. So if this is the radius, we increase it up. So what it does here is that this sphere will collide with this sphere, and it will try to deform. So maybe. For example, this line is going to deform like that, and that is going to be the base of the differential growth. So we go to the goals collision sphere collide. We give all of the points to the points input. The radius, if you want to see it, it's actually something like a mesh sphere with the same radius we have here. I just have to make this x divided by 2 so you can see that as a correct output. So as you can see here, this is going to be the spheres that are going to grow and uh, increase it gradually so you can get better results. We're going to give that as an output there, okay? So if I just uh, reset the simulation and start increasing these here, what we will get here is this output as a line. So I'm going to just turn this off, turn it on. We want to see the lines only. Let's decrease that back. That is going to be zero. That means they're not growing. And then when we increase it, you can see that the pattern is emerging. So what you can do here is to gradually put it back and forth. So the pattern is growing like that. And fill up the mesh with this pattern. And Changing the strength will also give you different results. So just try to play around with these inputs. And that's going to give us the spheres. Okay, so what I want to do here, if you want to even see them better, is that these lines have some nulls output. Uh, you can also go to the set tree clean tree. Uh, I can clean this and it will remove all of the nulls. Like this. If you want all of the vertices, you can also get those vertices here. Delete this clean and connect that as a polyline. Again, close it so we have that as an output. So the vertices is also another output we can get. If you want to see those as a sphere, I can again give this and same radius here and give it an x divided by 2 radius so we can see that correctly. And also let's give that a custom preview. If you want that to be smaller mesh, because this is the UV division, I can say, for example, 3 just to show them really faster or maybe five, I don't know. Just want to show you that these are the spheres and let's go to the rendered mode. Okay, we set the simulation and you can see that it's actually growing. And you can also see that it's intersecting if you put this number too big and start the simulation. So what you have to do is to put it to zero, start the simulation and increase that gradually. You can see that's going to grow on the mesh. And anytime you want to actually stop, you can just put this to false and it's going to stop the simulation. And we can get that polyline as an output. So that is going to give you the polyline you want. If you want to convert it into NURBS, you can just use a curve utility and rebuild this curve with a degree number three with maybe 200 control points so we don't lose the details of that. So you can see we will lose some details here, but this is going to make it really fast. 
and maybe we can project that on the ground transform project and then we can just use the surface freeform root surface to connect that one to that here like this and let's give this a custom preview to see the final results turn off the mesh and you can see that as the final result. So remember that you, if you want to run the simulation, you just have to reset to the to true and gradually increase that. It's going to slow down the process because we have some surface creation method here. But anyway, you can see that as the final results. I prefer to turn this part off and whenever I want to get the final results, just turn this on so I can see that here. Really fast and easy with the mesh on. Put this to here. Okay. Uh, I hope that this tutorial was useful. If you have any question, ask below and see you next time. Bye. Remember that you can download these uh, example files all from our website, parametrichouse.com. And remember to subscribe to our channel, like this video, share it with your friends, and let me know in the comments uh, if any additional uh, examples you need so we can record the tutorial. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.